Let's examine a couple load scenarios and see if this is the case. Before we do so, I will caution you to dial back your expectations. You know in all scenarios, minimum, maximum, and middle, the synchronous condenser always consumes 15 watts of real power per phase, accounting for friction. This is going to cause some problems because these example scenarios will seem pretty inefficient because source current, the summation of load current and synchronous condenser current in the power factor corrected scenario would actually be larger than the non-power factor corrected scenario. This is not ideal. This is, however, a limitation that can't be overlooked. However, we will be capable of demonstrating that the synchronous condenser can at least meet the reactive needs of a particular load. A more realistic industrial scenario might be a collection of loads that draw substantially more real power, such as the small amount of real power consumed by the unloaded and freely spitting synchronous condenser would be negligible. Really, all I'm trying to show in this brief demonstration is that by bearing field excitation current, we can match the reactive power requirements of a varying electrical load. Lastly, keep in mind, this is three-phase AC power factor correction. Given a balanced condition, everything that happens in phase one also happens in phase two and phase three, only phase shifted by a relative 120 degrees. By concentrating on what happens in a single phase, it keeps me from repeating myself. Our first load scenario is a balanced Y configuration of a slightly inductive impedance. In a non-power factor corrected scenario, each phase appears to draw 100 milliampers of current where current lags each phase voltage by a relative 74 degrees. Each load appears to be consuming roughly 3.5 watts of real power and positive 12 bars of reactive power. This is well inside the correct range of this particular device. I would suspect we need to slightly overexcite the rotor to supply an equivalent amount of negative reactive power. When we bring the synchronous condenser in parallel to the load, each load continues to consume the same amount of positive 12 bars of reactive power as previously. When we increase field current to approximately 680 milliampers DC and slightly overexcite the rotor, each winding of the synchronous condenser consumes roughly 15 watts of real power accounting for friction, yet supplies roughly negative 12 bars of reactive power, equal in magnitude, yet of opposite polarity to the load. Given current to the load lags and current to the synchronous condenser leads, source current, the summation of load and synchronous condenser current, appears in phase with supply voltage. The equal and opposite amounts of reactive power drawn by the load and supplied by the synchronous condenser cancel each other out, such that each phase is under the impression that it needs to only supply 3.5 watts of real power to the load and 15 watts of real power to the synchronous condenser for a total of 18.5 watts. Any amount of reactive power is exchanged between the load and the synchronous condenser at the point of use, and the source stays out of it. If this is a fixed scenario, we could determine a specific capacitor that would power factor correct the system. Problem is, Systems aren't fixed, and sometimes loads change. Case in point, consider another load scenario where load impedance drops, current rises, and becomes more inductive in nature. In the non-power factor corrected scenario, each phase appears to draw roughly 185 milliampers of current, lagging each phase by a relative 66 degrees. Each load appears to be consuming 9 watts of real power and positive 20 vars of reactive power. This is five hours beyond the amount of negative reactive power the synchronous condenser is capable of supplying, so even if we max out field excitation current, we'll most likely fall five hours short. It's still worth a shot. When we bring the synchronous condenser in parallel to the load, each load continues to draw the same amount of current, consumes the same amount of real and reactive power as previously. When we max out rotor field current at 710 milliampers DC and further overexcite the rotor, each winding of the synchronous condenser consumes roughly 15 watts of real power counter for friction yet now supplies an increased negative 15 vars of reactive power of opposite polarities of the load, yet just shy of meeting the magnitude. It's still better than nothing. The positive 20 vars of reactive power drawn by the load and the negative 15 vars of reactive power supplied by the synchronous condenser only partially cancel each other out, such that each phase is under the impression it needs to supply 9 watts of real power to the load and 15 watts of real power to the synchronous condenser, or 24 watts, and positive 20 minus 15 or five hours of reactive power. A majority of reactive power is cyclically exchanged between the load and the synchronous condenser at the point of use, and the source only needs to supply the missing five hours per phase. Source current, the summation of load and synchronous condenser current, appears now to only slightly lag supply voltage, not nearly as much as the non-power factor corrected scenario. But wait, that's not all. In addition to synchronous condensers with overexcited rotors acting like capacitors and supplying negative reactive power, Synchronous condensers with underexcited rotors can act like inductors and consume positive reactive power. This is the rarely exploited left half of the reactive power as a function of field current plot. 
Very rarely are you going to have to power factor correct capacitive load since most industrial loads are inductive motors, but it does happen. Case in point, consider a scenario consisting of balanced Y configuration of a slightly capacitive impedances. In a non-power factor corrected scenario, each phase appears to draw 100 milliampers of current, leading each phase by a relative 81 degrees. Each load appears to be consuming 2 watts of real power and negative 12 bars of reactive power. This is well inside the correction range of this particular device. I would suspect we need to slightly underexcite the rotor to consume an equivalent amount of positive reactive power. When we bring the synchronous condenser in parallel to the load, each load continues to draw the same amount of current and consume the same amount of real and supplies the same negative 12 bars of reactive power per phase as previously. When we decrease field current to approximately 540 milliampers DC and underexcite the rotor, each winding of the synchronous condenser consumes roughly 15 watts of real power, counting for friction, but in this underexcited state, consumes positive 15 bars of reactive power. Equal in magnitude, you have opposite polarity to the load. Given current to the load leads and current to the synchronous condenser lags, source current, the summation of load and synchronous condenser current, appears in phase with supply voltage. The equal and opposite amounts of reactive power supplied by the load and consumed by the synchronous condenser cancel each other out such that each phase is under the impression it only needs to supply 2 watts of real power to the load and 15 watts of real power to the synchronous condenser for a total of 17 watts. Any amount of reactive power is cyclically exchanged between the load and the synchronous condenser at the point of use, and the source stays out of it. All right, that's about it. Remember this take home point. If a three phase AC system is inductive in nature, the power factor correction device must be capacitive in nature, and one needs to overexcite the rotor such that the synchronous condenser supplies negative reactive power. In contrast, if a three phase AC system is capacitive in nature, the power factor correction device must be inductive in nature and one needs to underexcite the rotor such that the synchronous condenser consumes positive reactive power. In an ideal scenario, one should be able to manage field current such that the synchronous condenser is of equal magnitude yet of opposite polarity to the load. You will note during the course of this quick demonstration, I perform manual adjustment of the field current to meet the needs of a particular electrical load at any given time. A more sophisticated power factor correction application, making use of a synchronous condenser, would monitor phase shift or reactive power consumption in real time then automatically step up or step down excitation current to bring source current back in phase with supply voltage. We'll examine closed loop control systems enabling this automated means of power factor correction in later lectures. Until then, that's all I've got for you today. In conclusion, we examine the synchronous condenser. We learned that under excitation causes the synchronous condenser to consume positive reactive power as would an inductor, and over excitation causes the synchronous condenser to supply negative reactive power as would a capacitor. By managing field current, a synchronous condenser can power factor correct a larger three-phase AC system. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. And be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.